Practicing physician in Frederick, Maryland, and was the 2008 recipient of U.S. Congressional Recognition Award for establishing a cardiac seaport program at Frederick Memorial Hospital. Nazar has served as president of the Islamic Society of Frederick and as vice president of the Maryland Muslim Council. In addition to receiving numerous awards and recognition, Mudazar has a long history of community service, including volunteering at a maximum security prison in Georgia. He is currently the president of the Maryland Chapel of the Council on American Islamic Relations. Please welcome Mudazar Raza. Assalamu alaikum. That means peace be upon you. I want to start off by asking everybody, what makes us all American? I remember pondering that question at Brooklyn College when I was taking political science, uh, much to my parents' dismay. <laughs> what makes us all American? Is it ethnicity? Look around you, that can't be true. We have an African American today at the highest office in, in, of, our, of our land here. Is it religion? No. no. We had a Mormon American running for the highest office. What makes us American are our freedoms, our Bill of Rights, our Constitution. And today, that very essence is being threatened by the very government that has sworn to uphold these principles. Have we learned nothing from Germany? Nazi Germany, where one thing led to another and then dissent was crushed. Anything against the government was considered treason. People were locked up without trials, without due process. We are a step away from a political, st I'm sorry, a police state. Just one step away. Look at New York. The search and seize program aimed at minorities. Yeah, I, I was waiting for a yeah. I didn't, I didn't think that would come. <laughs> have, we, have we learned nothing from the NYPD surveillance program? Over a decade spying on Muslim Americans and not one shred of evidence. What did that serve to accomplish but to alienate? And some people would say, well, the Founding Fathers never envisioned such a complex environment. Really? They didn't? What did Benjamin Franklin say? Warning, those who will give up freedom for temporary safety deserve neither. It's not like this wasn't thought of. When evil flourishes when good people do nothing, and that's all the good people here today we need to continue this effort. Let me read something that I took from Nazi Germany, but I extrapolate it to what one day could happen. Hopefully it will never happen. When they came for my Second Amendment rights, I didn't say anything because I wasn't a gun owner. When they came, I did. This is a hypothetical situation that will never come. When they came for my Third Amendment rights, I didn't mind troops in my house because I supported the war, and damn it, I was a patriot. When they took away people's Fifth Amendment, Fifth Amendment rights, I didn't say anything because those people, they were kind of shady, and if I wasn't involved with anything, I'd be okay, and damn it, I was a patriot. When they came for my First Amendment, I didn't say anything, well, because, again, I supported the war, and damn it, I was a patriot. When they came for my Fourth Amendment and took away my home without due process, I couldn't say anything because I had lost my first. That's what happened in Nazi Germany. Are we gonna let this happen here? I think it was Abraham Lincoln that once said, America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. And that is what ha what's happening. So everybody with me, restore the fourth. Restore the fourth. Thank you again for coming and having me. Thank you.
please welcome Robert. Hey, assalamu alaikum. Happy 4th of July. Thank you everyone for coming here. Let's restore the 4th. Thank you. So I'm happy to mark this year's Independence Day by joining my fellow Americans here at McPherson Square at this Restore the Fourth rally. We're here for the one reason to support the U.S. Constitution's Fourth Amendment right against unreasonable searches and seizures. Several re weeks back when reports began to circulate that the NSA and FBI are tapped into the nation's top internet technology companies and collecting the phone call records of millions of American citizens, I was told by a fellow colleague from another civil rights organization, there might be a good chance that the feds are intercepting my phone calls and emails, but I'm absolutely sure that your organization and that the Muslim community is under surveillance. I had one simple response and reply. We are all under surveillance. Yeah, right. As a nation, we sat idly by while Congress passed and the president signed into law the U.S. Patriot Act and the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, FISA. The primary sources of authority from which this de expansive domestic surveillance program derives. While Americans were told that these programs have been used primarily to target violent extremist groups like Al-Qaeda, federal law enforcement and national security quickly use these newfound powers to spy on American citizens. That's not right. No. 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 This all-encompassing domestic spying program that collects and deciphers metadata from our phone calls, from our emails, from the, our online footprints, it doesn't only affect the civil rights of uh, Muslim Americans, it corrosively dismantles the privacy and free speech rights of all Americans. Yeah. Oh, right. The 4th of July honors that triumphant day in 1776 when the Continental Congress adopted the Declaration of Independence. Let's celebrate that. Asserting the right of the America's 13 colonies that they were free and independent from the tyranny of British rule. Our nation's founding fathers rejected, and mothers rejected, the absolute despotism and the long train of abuses and usurpations of American colonial citizens' rights and rules of law. Sounds kind of familiar right now, doesn't it? Yeah. Prior to the, here's a little history for you quick. Prior to the Declaration of Independence being signed in 1761, Boston lawyer James Otis spoke against the overly broad warrants that were being issued by the British government. These writs of assistance allowed the Crown's agents to search any house or ship they wished without any specific reason. John Adams, signer of the Declaration of Independence and second president of the United States, he said of Otis's speech, then and there, the child of independence was born. And here we celebrate that birthday. Today we rally under disheartening reports that the federal government has engaged in acts of domestic surveillance and spying, which undermines those very core constitutional privacy protections and prohibitions against these unreasonable searches. While some in Congress and the White House, they say that these programs, these domestic spying programs are lawful, CARE in the civil rights community believes that the Fourth Amendment and the Constitution is clear. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrant shall be issued upon probable cause. I'm sure if they were writing that today, they'd include phone calls and emails. Again, CARE urges the President and Congress to establish clear criteria on how long these communications are being stored and collected and that Congress amend Section 215 of the Patriot Act in order to better enact safeguards to protect the rights of Americans from such abuses and commit full public disclosure and transparency by declassifying these programs today. Furthermore, without any additional information about the criteria used to determine how the NSA and their analysts use these programs to only target individuals based on their foreignness, CARE remains equally concerned that these programs could be discriminating against the basis of religion and national origin. 
So legislative initiatives like these are necessary to protect the Fourth Amendment rights of all American citizens, including the members of the American Muslim community, which have been subjected to unwarranted and discriminatory acts of surveillance for the last decades. The Council of American Islamic Relations is proud to be a part of that long American tradition by our nation's founding fathers in asserting the rights and liberties of our fellow citizens against government abuses and usurpations of law. In celebrating today, July 4th, CARE and I personally invite you to read copies of the U.S. Declaration of Independence, read copies of the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights, and then go on our website and any other organization here, their website, get in contact with your member of Congress, get in contact with the President and tell them that now is the time to end surveillance, stop reading our phone calls, stop reading our emails, stop reading our phone calls. Thank you very much.